In this video, I'm going to write a C program for sorting three numbers. And we'll actually ask the user for these three numbers. And we'll store them into variables n1, n2, and n3. So first we'll prompt the user. We'll say printf, enter three numbers. And then we'll use a scanf to store the numbers. So we'll say scanf, percent %d, percent %d, percent %d for three integers, and then and n1, and n2, and and n3 to store the numbers entered into n1, n2, and n3. So this problem is actually a pretty typical problem in early computer programming courses to help students think through how to solve a problem. Because there's actually several ways we could go about sorting these three numbers. The way that I'm going to go about solving this problem is I'm going to figure out which is the lowest number of the three. And once I've figured out that, I really just need to figure out what is the order among the remaining two numbers. So I'll show you what I mean here. I'll make three variables, lowest, middle, and highest for storing the lowest, middle, and highest numbers. And the goal of my algorithm here is to figure these numbers out. And my strategy is going to be to find the lowest number first. And then I just need to figure out the middle and highest numbers from the remaining two numbers. And this is just one approach, but it's an approach that I think makes as much sense as any other. So we'll say here, if n1 is less than or equal to n2 and n1 is less than or equal to n3, this means that n1 is the lowest number. And then we can assign lowest equal to n1. So we've figured out what the lowest number is because if n1 is less than or equal to n2 and it's less than or equal to n3, it must be the lowest number. Now, to figure out the middle and highest numbers, we just have to sort out what's going on between n2 and n3. And we can do a nested if to figure that out. So within this if block here, we can have another if statement to figure out what is the order between n2 and n3. So we'll say here, if n2 is less than or equal to n3, that means that n2 is the next lowest number, which would make it the middle number. So here we'll say middle is equal to n2, and the highest number must be n3. Otherwise, if this is not the case, it's the other way around. Because if n2 is not less than or equal to n3, then it must be greater than n3. And if that's the case, the middle number is n3, and the highest number is n2. And so now in the case that n1 is the lowest number of the three, we've taken care of the two possibilities, that the middle number is n2 and the highest is n3, or that the middle number is n3 and the highest is n2. So we've actually kind of completed this set of cases. Now the next thing we can think about is what if n2 is the lowest number? And we can use an else if branch in this outer if statement here to figure that out. So we'll say here, else if n2 is less than or equal to n1 and n2 is less than or equal to n3, we know that n2 is the lowest number. So we'd say lowest is equal to n2. And now we could have another nested if that's going to look just like this, essentially, but with different numbers substituted in, because we have the same problem again. Now we know that n2 is the lowest number, and we need to figure out the order between n1 and n3. We want to know which one is the middle and which one is the highest. So we can say here, if n1 is less than or equal to n3, n1 is the middle. So we'd say middle is equal to n1, and highest is equal to n3. Otherwise, if that's not the case, again, it's going to be the opposite that the middle is going to be n3 and the highest is going to be n1. So again, we figured out that n2 is the lowest number. And then by process of elimination, there's only two cases. We've ordered n1 and n3 with respect to each other. Because here, n1 is less than n3. That means it must be the middle number and n3 must be the highest. If this is not the case, then it must be the other way. That the middle number is n3 and the highest number is n1. So now there's only one more possibility we have to account for with our bigger outer if statement. And that's the possibility that n3 is the lowest number. 
And because that's the only possibility left by process of elimination, we don't even have to do an else if case. We can just do an else case because that's literally the only thing that's possible at this point is that N3 is the lowest number. Now in this block here, where N3 is the lowest number, we're still gonna have to figure out which is the middle and which is the highest among N1 and N2. So we'll say here, if N1 is less than or equal to N2, that means that N1 is the middle number. So we'll say here, middle is equal to N1 and highest is equal to N2. And then again, if that's not the case, it must be the opposite way, that the middle number is N2 and the highest number is N1. So at this point, we've actually gone over all possible orderings of N1, N2, and N3 across all these conditions in these if statements. So the next thing to do is actually print out the order. So we'll say here printf, we'll do a couple new lines, and then we'll printf the ascending order. So we'll say printf, ascending, percent %d, percent %d, percent %d, put a couple new lines in, and we'll put in the lowest number, the middle number, and the highest number. Then we can also print out the descending order. So we'll say printf, descending, percent %d, percent %d, percent %d, slash n, slash n, and we'll output the highest, middle, and lowest number. So we'll save this, we'll compile it and run it, and now we can enter three numbers. So I'll say maybe seven, nine, and maybe two. And if I hit enter, we get an ascending order of two, seven, and nine, and a descending order of nine, seven, and two. And so we've now written a program in C that can sort three numbers. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.